picked up one of these half sheets on the table back there. If you didn't get one, raise your hand and we'll uh, get someone to help. These are, these are the ones for the kids and the adults today. Usually I make up some just for the kids, but these are for all of us today. And there's a couple of reasons behind that, but... <clears throat> Anyone need them? Go ahead and raise your hands. Yeah. <clears throat> Don? Kevin. <laughs> there were some children that were asked about Bible facts that they knew. Here were some of the things that they wrote down. The first commandment was when Eve told Adam to eat the apple. <laughs> One of them said, Samson slayed the Philistines with the Acts of the Apostles, A-X-E. One of them said that unleavened bread is bread that is made without any ingredients. And Moses went up to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. Moses died before he ever reached Canada. So Joshua led the Hebrews in the battle of Jericho. <laughs> the greatest miracle in the Bible is when Joshua told his son to stand still and he obeyed him. <laughs> Solomon, one of David's sons, had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. Mentioned that one to Laura this morning. She said he'd have been better off. <laughs> and of course, the epistles were the wives of the apostles. <clears throat> Let's turn to some things that are not as funny, but are along the same line. The problem is that biblical illiteracy is rampant in our world. The Bible has been called America's favorite unopened text. So it's the bestseller. It's been the bestseller for all of our lifetimes. But it's an unopened text. Exploring Religious America survey of 2002 said that over 84% of Americans consider the Bible to be very or at least somewhat important in helping them make decisions in life. But fewer than one half of all adults can name the four Gospels. Many cannot identify more than two or three of the disciples. 82% of Americans believed that God helps those who help themselves is a Bible verse. Of Americans who identified themselves as born-again Christians, the percentage there was better. Only 81% of them thought that that was a Bible verse. 1% better. There was a Barna poll that indicated that at least 12% of adults asked about it thought that Joan of Arc was Noah's wife. Which means not only are they biblically illiterate, they're historically illiterate too. Another survey of graduating high school seniors revealed that over 50% 
of high school seniors being polled thought that Sodom and Gomorrah were husband and wife. A considerable number thought that the Sermon on the Mount was preached by Billy Graham. It's not just out there in the world either. Hugh Fulford, aging preacher. I don't know exactly how old he is. He is still preaching. Um, I've never met the man, never heard him preach, but I read an article of his recently in the uh, Spiritual Sword about biblical illiteracy. He said that when he was a young man, I believe he said it was the first place he ever preached full time, he had a brother in the church who was not a young man, who was of mature age and had been in the church for a number of years, asked him, how old was Jesus when he joined the church? And Hugh caught himself before he started laughing when he realized the man was serious in his question. There was another man, a leader in the church, not an elder or a deacon. They didn't have them in that congregation at that time. But a leader in the church, been a church, in the church for many years, said to Hugh Fulford one day, he said, Brother Hugh, Sister so-and-so has told me that if we buy a piano, she'll start worshiping with us and play the piano for us. I hope that everyone here realizes that our singing the way we do without instrumental accompaniment is not a matter of preference. It's not a matter of poverty, like we can't afford a piano or an organ or whatever. And it's not a matter of playing skills. Because it's not authorized in the Word of God. The religious world is at least partly, maybe largely, to blame for the rampant ignorance of the Bible. There was a shift a number of decades ago in the religious world from an emphasis on learning to an emphasis on feeling. There was a shift from focus on the Bible to a focus on Jesus, as if it's possible somehow to focus on Jesus without focusing on his word, the Bible. There was a shift from what, what does the Bible say to what would Jesus do, as if we could know what Jesus would do apart from what the scriptures say. Ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught that we cannot know him in any type of relationship without knowing his word, except through his word. John 14 and verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15 verses 9 and 10, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love, verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. If we are ignorant of the Word of God, we will always be ignorant of God's nature, who He is, what He is. There is another factor at work in this matter of biblical illiteracy, and that is the, the truth that technology is changing how we get information. And while it's wonderful to have so much information at our fingertips, there are some problems with this. We want everything in a quick paragraph or a short video. People mostly get their news from headlines without any real regard to the bias of the source that they're getting them from. There was a professor at a religious college that explained one thing that happened with one of his students. He said, not long ago, I met with a student who was struggling in one of my courses. When I asked her what she thought the trouble was, she replied in a tone suggesting ever so slightly that the fault was mine. 
This is her quote. Reading a lot is not part of my learning style. She went on to inform me that students today learn more by watching videos, listening to music, and talking to one another. She spoke of the great growth that she had experienced in the youth group that she had come from, where she no doubt spent a lot of time watching videos and listening to music and talking with other young people. But, and this is his quote, her ignorance of the Bible clearly betrayed the fact that her faith community afforded her little to no training in actually reading the Scripture. The Bible must be read and studied. It is meant to be used in that way. Some years back, we had a preacher come to the congregation in Michigan where I was preaching to hold a meeting for us. And the very first lesson, he flashed up on the screen for everyone a, a picture, an artist's rendering of Jesus, bruised and beaten, wearing his crown of thorns, blood running down. And he said, when he put that picture up, he said, a picture is worth a thousand words. No, it is not brothers and sisters. Not when the words come from God and the picture is man's idea. People prefer Hollywood's The Passion of Christ to the written biblical account. They think that a, a picture stays in our minds better. And this type of thinking has allowed preaching to be replaced by drama presentation. God chose to give his message in words. And he caused it to be written down. That's what scripture means. The word itself means something written. John 5 and verse 39, Jesus said to the Jews, Search the scriptures, what is written. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16, Paul said, All scripture, the written, is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Truly furnished unto all good works. Christianity is a taught religion. That means it is a learned religion. And we learn from this book. We learn from what is written. Here in this book is our only offensive weapon in the battle against Satan. And by the way, it's the only one we need. Here is the panoply. We sometimes sing that word without knowing what it means, that the whole armor of God is found here in this book. Here is the treasure that cannot be stolen from us and cannot be destroyed or wiped away. How precious is the book divine by inspiration given. Holy book divine, the chorus of that song says, precious treasure Mine. I love to preach. I love to preach God's Word. I find it a great treasure. But I would rather show you the treasure map than just give you pieces of the treasure. Here in this book is guidance when the whole world is confused and confusing. Here is comfort. Remember the, the song, Living by Faith? We talk about no matter what evils betide. Yep. No matter what comes, here is comfort and strength if we are living by faith. So what I've done today with this sermon, I know you're waiting for me to get off of the introduction and actually get to it. What I've done with this sermon today is different than I normally do with PowerPoints. I've done it on purpose 
because I want us all to read the scriptures that I want to bring up, but because there's quite a few of them, we're not going to have time to turn to them. So I'm actually going to post them on the screen and ask you to read as I read them aloud to you. This is what we're looking at in the sheets that you have there. I want my mind and heart to be filled with Scripture because. Understand this. I cannot bully you into being a regular student of God's Word. I don't want to. I want you to want it. I want this to be your statement, not mine. I want my mind and heart filled with Scripture because. Number one, it comes from God. That's what was read for us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. That, that phrase actually means there it didn't come from a private source. And he goes on to explain that in verse 21, when he says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It comes from God. I want my mind and heart to be filled with Scripture because our world is dark and we need light. Psalm 119, 95. I'm sorry, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In 2 Peter 1 and verse 19 that was also read for us, we also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto we do well that take heed, and that's where we got the title for today's lesson, take heed, the version that was read to us a few minutes ago, pay attention. Well, that's what take heed means, right? Pay attention, take heed. But he says, we also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. This is the dark place, this world. And this light is shining through God's word. It is God's word. Unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. I want my mind and heart filled with scripture because it is true and reliable. Psalm 19 and verse 9. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Number four, I want my mind and heart filled with Scripture because there are many false teachers. In 2 Peter chapter 1, those three verses that were read to us, that we just went over again, he goes right from that into chapter 2, and it wasn't divided in chapters when Peter wrote it. He goes right from that in verse 1 of chapter 2 to say, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, Jesus said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Let me take just a minute there to remind you that when you turn on your television and turn on some religious channel to watch those televangelists there, and they're talking about end times and what's happening in the Middle East is fulfilling this prophecy from this book. Is on. It's not true, folks. They are false teachers. We're supposed to beware of false teachers. We need to be careful about this matter. Number five, I want my heart, my mind to be filled with Scripture because it is commanded and expected. 1 Peter 2.2, 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Ephesians 5 and verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How are we going to do that if our Bibles are covered with dust? Understanding what the word of the Lord is. How many 
other verses could we put up just for this point here? It is commanded and expected. Let me mention some of them to you real quick. 2 Timothy 2.15. King James Version says study, but the word actually there means be diligent to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth or handling aright the word of truth. 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 7. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. There's the command. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, as we make disciples, therefore as we become disciples, we are supposed to be learning and teaching all things that Jesus had commanded. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. John 8, verses 31 and 32. We quote this often. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John, or 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and becomes are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Number six. I want my mind and heart to be filled with Scripture because I don't know the right way to go. And neither do my friends. Proverbs 14 and verse 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Number seven, I want my mind and heart filled with Scripture because Satan is going to tempt me. And I want to be ready. Ephesians 6, 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. That's that panoply that we were talking about. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 16 of the same chapter, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know what that verse actually says? Young's, in his literal translation, puts a word that, that belongs, that's in the Greek, that isn't translated in most of our English versions. It says, above all, taking the shield of the faith. The faith. That's the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, that we are supposed to earnestly contend for. Jude, verse 3. The faith. And I added an extra little reference up here that you can... Uh, look at when you have time. We're aware of 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. that says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Have you ever thought about this possibility? That possibly the way to escape the temptation that Satan is going to bring to me tomorrow the way of escape that God provided for me to escape that temptation that's coming tomorrow is the verse that I studied today. Yes, Maybe. I'm not saying that's the only possibility, but certainly it is part of being on guard and escaping from temptation. Number eight, I want my mind and heart filled with the scripture because I want patience and comfort. The kind of patience and comfort that comes from the Scripture. Romans 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime that were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. You want patience, endurance? You want comfort in, in terrible times? It's found right here in this book. And therefore these things are for our learning. I want my mind and heart filled with Scripture because... I want good role models. Not 
powerful politicians, not titans of industry and business, not television and movie stars, not social media influencers, not sports figures. I want truly good role models. I want to develop the courage of David. I want to learn the humble, penitent spirit that Peter had. I want the passion for lost souls that the Apostle Paul exhibited. I want the integrity of Daniel. I want the patience and endurance of Job. I want those people as my role models. And I want those people for the role models of our children and grandchildren. But number 10, I want my mind and heart filled with scripture because I want to be a good role model. Matthew 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want to be the best husband, the best father, the best grandfather, the best example, the best man that I can be. Who is watching you? And do you want them to follow the example that you're setting? If someone is going to follow your example, are they going to end up in heaven or hell? I want to be a good role model as well as have good role models. Number 11, I want my mind and heart filled with scripture because I need to be ready to give an answer. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When someone says to me, why don't we have instruments of music with our spiritual songs? I'm supposed to be able to answer that, folks. You're supposed to be able to answer that. And the correct answer is found here. It's not, well, let me call my preacher. When someone asks, why do we have no women elders or deacons or preachers? Do you know to turn them to 1 Timothy chapter 3 or Titus chapter 1 or 1 Timothy chapter 2 beginning in verse 8 or 1 Corinthians 14 about let your women keep silence in the churches, etc.? If someone was to ask you, what, what is baptism and what is it for and why do we teach that no sinner can be saved without baptism? Do you know the scriptures? To point them to? To explain these things to them? Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer. Number 12. I want my mind and heart filled with Scripture because I will be judged by this book someday. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Remember the man Hugh Fulford that I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson? I want to read you a quote from him. Prepare yourself because it's blunt. I'm glad it is. He says it is a sin to be ignorant of God's word. Now, I'm assuming that he means there to remain ignorant of God's word. When you first come to the Lord, of course, you're going to have a higher level of ignorance. But he goes on to say, to have a Bible in our homes and not know what it says will be eternally disastrous. Biblical illiteracy will result in the loss of our soul. On the day of judgment, it will not matter what I always thought, how I always felt, or what I always believed. It will not matter what my children or grandchildren chose to do with their lives, morally and or religiously. It will not matter what my friends did. It will not matter if I lived a good moral life and was a good person with a good heart. On that day, we will be judged by only one thing, the Word of God. Am I trying to take away your sense of security as a Christian? If it's a false sense of security, yes. 
Strong faith in a rotten plank will land you in the creek. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26 says, For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. And he goes on to talk about the terrible punishment that God has prepared for those who sin willfully. Now that doesn't mean I became a Christian and later I knew something was sin and I did it anyway. No, that's not. It's, it's that present tense active verb there. If we continue to sin willfully... If we continue to walk in that willfulness, if we, if we won't turn away from it, if we won't repent of it, if we continue to sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. It is a sin to neglect God's word. What is going to happen to us if we continue in that willful sin? This is as serious as it can be, folks. Can I plead with you? Make up your mind. Determine your own course. Develop the habit of personal Bible reading and study. Attend every service that you possibly can to come and to learn and every Bible class and make sure your children are in the Bible classes every time. There are no shortcuts. You cannot simply wait until some question arises and then go find a YouTube video about it. No AI is going to come along and give you God's answers. You cannot simply depend on the knowledge of the preacher. The elders alone cannot guard the flock. We all have the responsibility to earnestly contend for the faith. I know I'm running over a little bit. Give me just a minute here. Lots of times we hear people speculate about why we're not winning as many souls as they did back in the 60s and so forth. And there's a lot of factors in that. We need to be fair about that. And regardless of whether people accept this or not, the attitude of the world has changed. And there are few people, fewer people, not, I don't want to say few, but there are fewer people who are looking. That's part of the factor. And people have said, well, we, we preached the word more boldly back then. Well, maybe we did, and maybe that's part of it also. But I suggest to you that back then, members of the Church of Christ were known as Bible-toting, Bible-quoting people. The members were known that way. The members were known to be able to give Bible answers to Bible questions to give Bible advice to people that were hurting or struggling. Is it possible that one of the reasons we're not winning souls as they did back then is because we're just not prepared for the job? We haven't seriously developed our own personal Bible study and Bible reading. Make up your mind. It is only this book that can give us the hope of eternal life. It is only this book that can teach us what we need to do in order to have our sins forgiven, washed away by the blood of Jesus. Don't know where you are, spiritually speaking. But I would urge you to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, as who He claimed to be. Because He said, if you believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. John 8 and verse 24. To turn away from those things that the Scripture teaches as sin. To make a, a change in your mind about that. Determine not to continue in sin. That's called repentance. And Jesus commanded it in Luke 13 and verse 3. Peter commanded it in, in Acts 2 and verse 38. Paul commanded it in Acts chapter 17 in the 
sermon there given on Mars Hill. In addition to repenting of our sins, it may be that you're at a point where you need to confess Christ publicly, openly. Confess the faith that you have in him as Lord, as the Son of God. And to be baptized into him for the remission of sins and raised to walk in newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4. If you haven't done those things, God's word, the Bible, teaches us to do those things. And then to continue to live for him. To be faithful unto death, Revelation 2.10. To be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. To continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers, Acts chapter 2. It may be that you followed those steps, but you failed in that last one. Failed to remain faithful. Maybe because of a lack of personal Bible study. We're going to sing this invitation song because we want you to be right with God. If you have a need, won't you come to the front as together we stand and sing.